by what? By faith. by faith. This morning they talk about faith because what they are they are discussing in the morning is faith and grace. Hallelujah! Faith and grace. And so, what brings grace mm -hmm. is faith. And what brings faith is the word of God. Hallelujah! The word of God that you hear brings faith, and the faith you hear brings what grace. Hallelujah! Ready by grace and so therefore the bottom line is the word of god and we must everyone as a member of this place you must establish your life on the world you must settle your mind on the world and you must have passion to hear the word you must have passion to study the word you must have passion to do the word hallelujah yeah. so faith for you for you for your faith to rise you must hear the word Tell somebody today, I want to hear the word. That will stir my faith. That will stir my to faith. To do the impossible. To do the impossible. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's the reason we are called. Amen. I always tell someone, there are many times I have to say that I'm called for the impossible. I'm called for those difficulties. And that's why sometimes when I see, when I see some of the things that are happening around me, I say, well, it's because the, these things are difficult for my people. I'm called for the difficulties. And I, and I don't run for difficulties. I face it, whether it's for me or for somebody, because what I am called for it. Praise Master Jesus. And every one of us are called for that. Amen. We we, we have this, we, we are made to, to settle cases in this land. We are made to settle cases in this world. He said, You shall you are blessed. I will make you a blessing, and you shall be a blessing to others. Why? Because of what is in you. Because of the inherent power that is resting in you. Because of the inherent power that you have. Because of the thing that you have. And that's the reason why you are given much responsibilities. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. When you don't have anything to offer, you are not given responsibility. You will be a push aside. Even in a community. When you don't have anything to offer, you will be what? A push aside. Because you don't have, they, they won't give you any responsibility. They won't give you anything for you to carry or for you to do. Because you are a liability and you will not, now you don't have anything to offer, they'll push you aside. But glory be to God that in the kingdom of God, there is no one that does not have something to offer. Tell somebody I have something to offer. I have something to offer. Hallelujah. Yeah. So a, a living a, a living, a triumphing life by faith because everything that we are in this kingdom works by faith. If you really want to live a life, you need to exercise that faith that has been given to you. What is faith? Faith is the supernatural ability of a believer. The supernatural ability of a believer. They tell you this thing is black or this thing is white. And by faith, you, you are seeing it black. And because of that, your faith, through that, your faith, that thing that you have believed can be turned to black because of your faith. It's a supernatural ability given toward a believer. And so we must live a triumphant life, which life that has been given to us last Sunday we celebrated Easter, Resurrection. And so Resurrection has given us a triumphant life. Because why? Jesus triumphed over death. Hallelujah. Jesus did what? Triumph over death. What is triumph? Triumph in, it simply means victory. Amen. A victorious life. You always live a victorious life. You always have victory. You are a victor. Hallelujah. We have victor here. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody, I am a victor. I am a victor. That means you are always winning. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that challenge does not come. What makes you a winner is because challenge came and you face it and you will overcome. Amen. Because the world you are is full of challenges. The world you are is full of problems. And so therefore, because you are not a believer, so many of us believe that once you are a believer, challenges does not come. Once you are a believer, so everything as you, you pray today, the next day everything is just soft. It's just flowing. No. No. No, sir. No, man. It doesn't go that way. That makes you a victor. As it comes, you face it with prayers, with everything that is in you. And as you face it, it must surely succumb to you. Hallelujah. As long as you did not what? Relent. Amen. 
So we, we are called to a triumphing life. We are called to what? A triumphing life. A life. A life I wrote, wrote here. First of all, we have known what is faith. Faith is a supernatural ability of a believer. Amen. Faith is a supernatural ability of what? A believer. How many of us are called faith here? Amen. We have people that are the name, their names are faith. So faith is a super. So if you are called faith, you are supposed to be doing extraordinary things. Don't just be bearing that name like that. Eh? Praise the Lord. How many of us are bearing faith here? No, no, no. I don't know of my sister. So you're supposed to be doing greater things. Eh? Because faith is a supernatural ability given to a believer to do the impossible. Amen. To draw what's supposed to happen like 10 years, 10 years time. You draw it to this time. That's faith. Yes. We read this morning, uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. What Jesus said, he said, For now, I'm not supposed to minister to you. But because of your faith, your faith has made the child whole. That means that thing was supposed to happen after resurrection. Because at that time, he's not supposed to minister to anybody that is outside Israel. But because of the faith of that woman, what's supposed to happen after his resurrection happened the time that Jesus has not died. Faith was able to draw it. That thing that was looked at, look as if it's far. He drew it away to now. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, faith is that. And triumphing is having victory. Victory or victory in everything that you do. Triumphing over darkness. Triumphing over what? Darkness. Because you are a light. And so if you are light, why should you be running for darkness? I see so many Christians, they run for darkness. And that woman is a witch. Because it's a witch, the house that you rented, you ran away because of a witch. That witch is supposed to run for you. That means you don't have, that means either you don't have Christ the light, or you have not understand what it means for you to be light. Because light does not run for darkness. Stop it. If you have that mindset, stop. Stop. Stop it. Darkness does not, light does not run for darkness. It is darkness that runs for light. Just as here is now. The moment this light goes off, darkness will begin to, will begin to take over. But the moment light comes, wow, darkness, it don't take off. And so, the Bible says that we are the light of the world. And so now, you are a light. That's what I'm a light. So triumphing over darkness. It means that sometimes there are things happening that are evil around you. Don't run for it. You will overcome that thing. Because there is the greater one dwells in you. There's an inherent power that dwells in you to overcome that darkness. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Triumphing over what? Darkness. That inherent power is in you. Triumphing over sin. That inherent power is in you. Because sin is in this body. Sin dwells in this body. This body that we are carrying everywhere. Sin, sin dwells in it. But there's an inherent power that is in you that you need, that you need to stir up and you will not be an overcomer of sin. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. So you have you triumph over what? Over sin. You triumph over death. You triumph over poverty. Hallelujah. You triumph over everything that comes your way. The circumstances of life, you triumph over it. The, 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 the things of life, you triumph over it. The nature itself, you triumph over it. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. Amen. The circumstances of life and the nature, you can triumph over them. When you say, we have a God that jumped protocols. There are laws that are stipulated, laws that have been placed. But when it comes to your case sometimes, they will jump it. How many of us know this? There are some things that are stipulated. But the moment it comes to you, they will jump that thing. Because why? There is an inherent power in you. You know, when you know this, it works. It works like nothing. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. If I begin to tell you so, so many things that I have done that it is not natural. 
it is it, the law that people are doing it, the normal law of me. As long as I carry that this, then I have that mindset. I go like that and I don't want you like that. Praise Master Jesus. Because why? I have that inherent power and I know. That's the thing. You do you know? Do you know that you need to live a triumphant life? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. You will need to live what a triumphant life. You are giving a triumphant life on resurrection day. The day that this life was given to you was the day of resurrection. You are giving a triumphant life on resurrection day. A life with power and authority. A life with power and what? Authority. A life with power and authority. You need to know this. And that's so that's the reason why so many of us, some of us are wallowing in sin. Some of us are wallowing with sickness. Some of us are wallowing in poverty. We are wallowing in different things because why? We don't know this life. You need to be taught about this life. One thing is to give your life to Christ or accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Another thing is to learn about that life. That life that is full of power and what? Authority. Hallelujah. This power and authority is not given to only pastors. It's given to every one of God, every one of us, because there is no grandchild. God does not have a grandchild. Do God have a grandchild? If you are a grandchild, let me see your hand. A grandchild to God. You are a son. Just as the pastor is a son. Just as Odebo Odebo is a son. Just as uh, Oyedepo is a son. Pastor Chris, they are sons. They are all sons. Every one of us are sons. There is no grandson. You can only, you can only use your power to subdue those that are not in Christ. Then you can make those ones your grandchildren. <laughs> Just say yes. You can make those ones. Then now, the power will be flowing through you. To them because you have it and they don't want to give their life to Christ because when they give their life to Christ they have access direct access to God just as I have you have the direct access to who to God but another thing is knowing and practicing and walking towards that and at the same time have yet, yet for it oh hallelujah praise master Jesus Hebrews 12 11 verse 2 the Bible says there that through faith, the elders have what? A good report. That good report means a triumphant life. Amen? Do we understand this? That good report, because if you now see the elders, you now begin to see what they did. That good report means what? A triumphant life. If they triumph over everything that comes their way. He said, he said, he said Daniel, Daniel, Daniel quench. He quench the, the, the lion's mouth. He triumphed over it. If you read that Hebrews chapter 11, you will see how they all, they all live a triumphant life. Praise Master Jesus. They have a good report. And so now you need to live such life. If one of those old people in the Old Testament could have such a triumphant life, and yet, the Bible says in that place, they, they were not having their promise. These same people. Can we see that place? Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11 they live a triumphant life just by knowing God hallelujah just by with the covenant in the oath they live a triumphant life but they were not having the promise not a talk of me and you that have the promise it is in us hallelujah the Holy Spirit glory to God are we in that place? Hebrews chapter 11. Amen? Are we following? Yes, Pastor. Verse 2. Let us read only verse 2. For by it, the elders obtain what? A good report. So now, when you begin to see all the elders, uh, Abel, Enoch, uh, just made mention of them, Noah, Abraham, they are they're moving on. They mentioned Isaac. They mentioned Sarah, they mentioned, they mentioned all the people. They mentioned Daniel, they, they mentioned Gideon. They, mentioned, they were mentioning and mentioning and mentioning and mentioning. Then now let's get to 36. Praise the Lord. 39, I mean. 39. They mentioned all their names. These were people that triumphed. 
now verse 39 and these all having obtained what a good report through what through faith but receive not the promise all these men that were written there all have a good report they live a triumphant life but their promise they did not receive it but glory to God that me and you has received that promise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The promise of the Holy Ghost. The promise of Christ dwelling in a man. Glory to God. There's an inherent power in you. So when you fail, God is not responsible. Because he has given you everything, what it takes for you to live. If these people that are mentioned here, by faith, they just believe in God. And they act, and they were living a triumphant life, a triumph life. Then what about you? That the Holy Spirit is dwelling in. The power to influence is in you. The power to do everything is in you. What about that? Have you thought about that? Praise the Lord. And so you, we, we need to wake up. This generation needs to wake up. We don't live a triumphant life. We don't live above darkness. We don't live. We don't, we don't triumph, triumph over darkness. Triumph over sin. Triumph over death, triumph over poverty, the circumstances of life. We need to triumph over them. The Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 5, from verse 13, he said, You are the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. The light of the world. The, do you think those things are we just written there for, for just written sake? Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. We need to practice these things. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 5. From verse 13. Why did Jesus say all these things? Why was he written down? Was he just written down for just to read? Was he written down for some set of people? He was written down for every believer. Everyone that has Christ. Matthew 5 36. Ye are the, the salt, salt of, of the earth. The earth. But if the salt have lost its sour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be rotting under foot of so when you are not using the authority that has been given to you, the power that has been given to you, the life that God has given to you, it's better to put it under the this thing and match it. That's what it's, it's better. He said, You are the salt. Do you know what the meaning of salt? When salt is not in your food, will it, will it be what? That means when we are not in this world, this world is tasteless. Hallelujah. Have you considered that? That when you are not in your beauty, things can happen. But because you are in that beauty, nothing is happening. Because you are the salt. The salt. You are the sweetness of that area. We are the sweetness of this area. So much hallelujah. hallelujah. He said the salt of the earth. So make use of it. You are a blessing. You are a blessing. And now move down. Verse 14. He said, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be what? Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Unto all that are in the He said, You are a light, a city that is set on a high hill. And sometimes when you are traveling, you see some city on a hill. You can never hide that city. Because when you are going, you must surely see the city. Because why? It is on a high hill. God has made us to be like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You can never be pushed aside. Amen. Unless there are people where you say you want to push me aside, you are just joking. Because the day will still call you, will still call my line. And if you like, you are running. The day will call you, call my line. Pastor, I need this. Yes. A city that is set on a hill that can never be hidden. 
That is who we are. Make use of it. Make use of it. Be conscious of it. Have this mindset. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. And he says here, he said, Neither do men and light a candle and put it under a bushet, but on a candlestick and give it light to all that are in that heart. If you are a, a, a child of God, you need to live a triumphing life. And so that you will not be a push aside. So that you will not be so, so, so people just see you and say, this person waiting in the talk. Hallelujah. You can never be put under a bushet. It's always put on top of the candle. And light all men. Then why are we not acting to that? Why is darkness raining around you? Some of us, I said it last Sunday, even on Thursday, you are in a house. They don't even know whether you are a child of God. After church is over, it's finished. They don't even know whether you are a child of God. You even have tenants that don't even go to church. You are a church and they are at home and you are not concerned. You are here, your husband is at home, you are not concerned. And you are the light. There is something in you and you are not making sure of it. You are just saying, you are just living a life. Just, well, anyhow, anyhow, one time. You are just pleased by, by what, where you are. Wake up! Live a triumphant life. Live a life that inflames others. Live a life. As I said that, I boastfully say it. It's right from time. You cannot stay in my house and you will not go to church. It's not possible. I will force you. But there's a way I would, and the, the, the only way the life that we are living alone, it will attract you to say, let me go and see that church. It will attract, there's no way, you can't live with me. I'm not talking about when I became a pastor, I'm talking about then. There's no way you're going to live with me that you won't say you want to go follow me to church. There's no way. I will, I will pursue you with every means. Every means I will use this for you. And a day will come, you will succumb and you will go with me. Because why? I have that thing in me that you cannot be by my side or you my house is my room is here your room is here and at the end you cannot be affected it's not possible i'm telling you because the light i am the light and so he said when that light comes it gives light to men the people around you gives light to them it gets it, it, it gets to even that sometimes you always in, in, in Nigeria we always pray that we, sometimes some these uh, people of mindset uh, uh, poor mindset they want to build as close to a rich man so that when the rich man have light the light will shine to you that is who you are anywhere you go you are a blessing and so when you when somebody in fact if you are close to me if you are close to me it's a blessing I'm telling you it's not by my power. Is by what I've read in the word of God. When you are rejected, he has rejected blessing. I'm telling you. And that's what Jesus said. He said, he said you, when you go to place and at the end, he said, dust your feet and leave. Because why? They have rejected blessing. Because you are carrying you are a carrier of blessing. Anywhere you go, you carry that blessing. Anybody you see, he, 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 he wants to be a, he is a partaker of that blessing that you carry. When you have that mindset, is is so. He said, You are a light of the world. The light of the world. The light of the world. The light in your flats. The light in your house. Your full house doesn't even know. What, even your flat, I'm never talking about full house. I'm not talking about your flat. Your flat doesn't even know if you are a believer or not. Don't talk of your full house. Your full house don't even know if you are a believer or not. Because why? You're not living a life, a triumphing life. You're just living a life just to come to church and you go back. Just to come to church and you go back. Live a life that you supersede. Um, that is an extraordinary life. Extraordinary life. When there's some people in my house, when I found that they are not greeted, there's a day I, I stop and say, uh, why? What is happening? You don't greet. I will greet you, don't greet me. Oh, my wife greets you, you know. Even before he told me, he said, one thing, this is that, and I come, and I said, come. But this woman says, at the moment after that, it was stone. 
They from they will not, they will know who you are. There is in my blood nobody don't know who I am. Nobody. Because because why I I I I you know, the, 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 the life that Christ has given to you is not a it's not religious life. Yeah. Some of us are living a religious life just to come to church and after prayers. It is not my business or that person whether or not it's not your business. That's not the life that Christ has given to us. That's not the life. The life, the life that He has given to us is a life that needs to shine. As you are covering, you cover your flat. As you cover your flat, you cover your house. As you cover your house, you, you, you begin to extend it. You extend it. That is the life that Christ wants us to do to live. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. The life some of us we cannot minister to people. The reason because of the kind of life we are living. They don't want to accept insults. Because you are like this. You don't want to accept insults. Why will you not accept insults? You cannot talk to somebody about Christ. Because you don't want to accept insults. Why? You are the light of the world. Praise Master Jesus. Jesus says, he said, I am the light of the world. And whosoever that follow me, that light of life will be given to him. The light of life. And it's in you. Let it shine. Let it shine to others. What God has blessed you with. Let it get to another person. And that's the reason some of us cannot win a soul. Because what you have in you, you are not sharing with others. You are not, you are not allowing it to flow to the other person that is around you. You just, just only, that's not the life of a Christian. So I look people that said eh, salvation is personal. We know that. And at the same time, he say, eh, they are saying that eh, eh, your belief, your belief is in their hearts. Christianity, Christ. Has given us a life to dominate. Let somebody have dominate. He has given you a life to dominate. Amen. He has given you a life to dominate. Dominate darkness that's around you. Dominate when there is sickness around you. Dominate it. Pray for that person. Brother, can I pray for you? Look for people that are sick. There was a time I was looking for people that I go to hospital. Pray for people that are sick, I'm telling you. Pray for people that are sick. And Bishop, it also said that there was a day he had that, that you can pray for the dead and the dead will wake up. Begin to look for a dead person in, in Benicity. And he got to him, but nothing happened that day. He go back again. The next one, the next day again, the same thing. But the day not come, something happened. Oh, yes. That is it. You hear something, you cannot, you are not moved to do something. You know, if we just close now, <laughs> we are going home. Our, our sense today, today was great. What is the topic? You don't know. <laughs> just like what they, they, they came out from, from Easter. They said, what was the meaning of Easter? And he began to, and he said, to, I was saying, it was great. <laughs> but what's the meaning of Easter? He does not know. Imagine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. I am the light of the world. You need to show it, not just only, not just on anybody that comes your way. I have traveled here to, to Sudaria to pray for my landlord, my former landlord that was staying in his house. I'm telling you, my former landlord that was staying in his house, I have traveled from here to Sudaria just to go and pray for him because I want to let him know that I am a different person. Let people know. Let the world know who you are. You have this power. It's in you. Practice it. Tell somebody practice it. Practice it. You need to practice it. You need to let people know who you are. If you don't know, practice it. Practice it on your husband. Practice it on your wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let him your hands. Begin to lay your hands upon that your husband, your wife. That then you must you must give your life to Christ. As you are speaking upon him, a day will come. And as you are continuing speaking, you are continuing saying, a day will come, he will follow you. Because the greater one dwells in you. Praise Master Jesus. In fact, we don't know what we have. That's the reason why we just live a life anyhow. A life anyhow. 
You know, and if I if I have any slight opportunity, I preach to anyone that I meet. Anyone. If you are a doctor, you are my doctor. If I have means I preach to you. Do you know that God is greater than what you are doing? I preach to you. Anyone, anywhere, I'm telling you, it's not a joke. If anyone that has followed me to offices, you will know what I'm saying. Police, anyone, if I have the opportunity, the next thing I will do, I begin to preach to you. You will need to receive Christ. Because the greater one, the, the teacher, one of our teacher of our daughter that came, of our son came to, to me one day that, in fact, the way you, the way you believe God, I want to believe that. Okay, follow me to church. You know what I will follow you. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So it's very important. Everyone, your teacher, even your teacher of your of your of your this thing, they don't know whether you are a believer. Your own room, your even your black person in your room doesn't even know that you are a believer. <laughs> yes, they don't even know whether you are a believer. Your room, your your this is fact with you. Yeah? They don't even know that whether you are a believer. A triumphing life is a life of dominating. A life of what? Dominating. You dominate. You, you, you find every means to, to do what? To dominate. The occasion of this place, the one before I preached to you. If I even have chance of this one, because nah, nah, and I because that was the reason why I used the association there to, to enter in. The other one didn't even come to a uh, former church. This one, this one, I've not got time because my time now is up. Use any means to talk to anyone. Or maybe, okay, Spanish. That's the reason why we are having Spanish class now. <laughs> How many of us are going to Spanish class now? Amen. Amen. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. Do your cagao in church, in school, in uh, this thing, know that you are a Christian. Do they know that whether you are a believer? Do, do, do they know whether, because as long as I'm in, in this, in this, in this uh, company, nothing is happening. It's upward. You let them know. You let them know that you are the blessing of this company. Because the moment you leave, your blessing goes with you. And so therefore, you are the blessing of that company. Amen. Have this mindset. It, it, because the life that Christ has given to you, it pays so dearly for it. And it pays me so much that some people don't even know who they are. They don't even care to know who they are. They just live their life anyhow. And I, sometimes I doubt if you are a believer. Because if you are a believer and you are hearing this sound word and you have not changed, it means that you, some of us, we don't even hear. And yes, we don't even hear what we are saying right now. I think I begin to speak in Aibu. Or Urubu. Migwo. I begin to speak up. So that, now I begin to hear. Eh? Sure. Yes, now. <laughs> eh? They will do announcements here. Yeah. Some people say they hear. <laughs> so how about do you now begin to hear? So how are you now begin to hear the word? Where are you on head, man? <laughs> tell me. Just tell me. Una. Eh? Did you hear what I said? How? 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 Eh? You probably to hear the word. Because it's the word that transformed. It's the word that transformed. I, I, I think we have a prize now here. And I said that same grace, that same grace that is a new pastor. Pray for me. So that same grace you follow me. But the things that I do, will you are you able to do it? Do it? Will you are you willing to do them? But you want the grace, but you don't want to do what I am doing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, people of God. God has given us a life. A triumphant life for that matter. A triumphant life for that matter. That you need to let the world know. Amen. You need to let the world know that God has given you what? A triumphant life. He has given you a triumphant life. You told you to let the world know. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Matthew, lastly, Matthew 11, 11. That 11, 11 verse then, you now go to 12. Lastly, let's, let us read that place. Matthew 11, 11. That life that he has given to us, we read in Hebrews just now, that the promise was not given to them. But now, we are given the promise. 
Matthew 11, 11 and 12. 11 says, Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater, is greater, is greater. Is greater. Are you greater than John the Baptist? Yes, Are you in the kingdom? Yes, sir. We made mention of everybody just now that in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11. Those men were great men. But yet he says here that you are greater than the, the highest in that in that era. And the highest in that era was John the Baptist. And he said the least in the kingdom of God. It means that even your lowest grace that you have is greater than the person that is in the old. A triumphing life, a life that supersedes this natural, a life, a terrestrial life, living it on earth. Hallelujah! Praise Master Jesus. Then verse twelve. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent one took care of it by force. Take that your triumphant life by force. Amen. He said, and from that John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent one do what? Take, it by force. Take your freedom by force. Amen. Take it by force. Amen. Your triumphant life, take it by force. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I speak to somebody. You are taking your life back in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you sick in the body? Take that triumphing life of our sickness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatsoever that is your challenge, I speak to you right now that you are taking over in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are dominating that thing right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatsoever happens that you are struggling to stop in the name of Jesus, you are taking over and you are triumphing over the habit, over the character in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are triumphing. Oh, yes. He said, take it by force. They ran from the days of John the Baptist. The kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent one to all. Take it by force. You take it. Whatever that belongs to you, you take it. A triumphing life. Don't you, don't, it's, not just, it's, it's not just you wake up the next day. I mean, no. There are ways to that triumphant life. Hearing the word of God and begin to practice. As you are practicing it, you might fail in some places. But don't care. Keep on practicing it. Until one day, you become perfect in that area. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And somebody I dominate. I dominate. We all rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody, I am born to dominate. I am born to dominate. That's what I am born to rule. I am born to rule. I am born to reign. I am born to reign. Practice it right now when you get home. If, you, if there's any one year that you have a tenant, I don't go into church. Begin to practice it now. That does not even believe. Let your life shine. Let your glory shine to that person. And before you know it, you begin to have a change of heart. Hallelujah. Not even your roof. As long as it's in your roof, I tell you, the light will shine to him. But don't feel unconcerned. Receive that grace now. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace to minister to people. In the name of Jesus. He said, Whosoever that will believe in my name, you shall do what? Cast out the devils. In my name, you shall, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And that's why that place is said, said right from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God so far and violent. And the violent ones do what? Take it by force. Take your head by force. And in, you take your finances by force. Open up your mouth and begin to take. Whatsoever that look as if you are struggling in that area, take now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, to minister to people, I take it by force. 
in the name of Jesus. I take it. I take now. I take that hell. I take that child. I take that man. I take that woman. I take this nation in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Somebody say, I take. I take. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. This nation. This nation. I am taking it. We are taking it. We are taking it. We are taking it. We are taking it. The good of this land. We are taking it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise Master Jesus. Do you know that a lot of people does not have work in this town? But most of us have. No business. But we have. Some don't have house, but we have. Hallelujah. And we are moving from there. When you are able to overcome one thing, get to the next level. Oh, yes, so there was a time I was saying, I have overcome sickness. Now I want to overcome lack. And by the grace of God, I've overcome lack. Amen. I overcome sickness. I'm telling you. I've gotten the secret of finance now. And now I can never be poor. Never. And at the same time, hey. I got the secret that there's a triumphing life over me that my case is different. Oh, yes, sir. Is your case different? Yes, sir. Is your case different? Yes, sir. Someone say my case is different. My case is different. I have a God that John Protocol. I have a God that John Protocol. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what? It's Jumpy Protocol. Oh, yes, sir. I'm not for have experienced that. The John Protocol is because of you. How many of us have experienced that? The job protocols because of you. Hallelujah. It happens everywhere. You can jump protocols because of you. Amen. We marry in these courts. Our best FK, we did not stamp it anywhere. The old one that we have uh, years back, uh, just one place.